This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. In this video, I'm gonna try and put this disk drive into this PS5 Digital. Let's do this. Now you might be asking yourself, why would someone try to put a disk drive inside of the diskless PS5 Digital? And to that I say, why would someone not try it? So this is as far as we need to go for now, based on my comparison between the PS5 disc version and the PS5 digital version motherboards. The only differences that I've seen are this connector and this connector are missing off of the PS5 digital. So I'm going to use this PS5 disc version motherboard and take this connector and this connector off of this motherboard and install it onto this motherboard. Then we'll plug a disc drive in and see if it works. So first thing I need to do is remove them from the disc board. So I have this PS5 motherboard propped up so I can reach the top and the bottom of the motherboard. I'm gonna use a hot air wand to heat up this area and heat up this area. That will melt the solder on the other side of the board, but leave the plastic connectors intact. Then I'll just use my tweezers to pull them off the board. So we've got our parts off. I don't know what this component is. It's definitely not happy, but it doesn't really matter. This is a junk PS5 motherboard. So let's inspect these connectors and make sure there's no damage. Okay, and the FPC connector looks great, no melting. And the cable connector also looks great. So these parts are good to go. Let's get the other motherboard up here and get these installed. Now, as much as I don't want to, I think I'm gonna remove the 43 screws to get this metal plate off. I probably can solder it on just fine with it on, but it's just gonna be easier and I'm gonna be able to show it more clearly if this plate is off. So I'm gonna do that first, then we'll get the soldering work done. And with those screws removed, we can take the metal plate off. Now we can see the entire motherboard and have much better access to these connectors. And that's approximately how they're gonna fit. I'm gonna get under the microscope so we can make sure and solder each of these pins on correctly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually wick some of the excess solder off of these mounting pins. That will help this connector sit down on here straight and smooth and fully. So then I can solder these pins on. Then I'll just add some solder and solder on the mounting pins. And now we have both connectors fully soldered on and secured to the motherboard correctly. You can see I got some solder on this ground plane right here. That's no big deal. I cleaned most of it up with some solder wick, but it's not a big deal to have a little bit on there either. So that's nothing to worry about. Now I'm gonna get this PS5 Digital back together enough to get the fan in, and then I'll put this disc drive in and let's see what it does. So we're gonna put the metal plate back on. I'm not gonna screw all the screws in because we don't need them just to test this. I'm also gonna plug in a power button board that's got the power button and eject button. So we'll remove that ribbon cable and put this one in. Now I can't actually put the fan in like I wanted to because the plastic cover that goes over this is not made for one with the disc drive. So in order to get to these connectors, I have to just leave it open like this. So I'm gonna put this disc drive right here. Then we'll get the connectors hooked up.
And now we're ready to plug it in and see what it does. Okay, HDMI cable first. Good. Power cable. Good, nothing's exploded yet, that's good. Let's check the eject button. Oh no, the eject button doesn't beep. That probably means there's no power to the disk drive. Let's turn it on and just see what it does though. Okay, come on. No, no power at all. Let's compare motherboards and see if there's some easy way that we can get power to the disk drive. Maybe there's just a fuse that bridges the connection and maybe we can just install a fuse and it'll work. But let's check that out next. Before we do that part, I'd like to talk about today's sponsor, JLC PCB. JLC PCB is a great place to get your custom PCBs manufactured. In fact, you can do it all right on their website. First, go to jlcpcb.com, then click on quote now. You'll wanna go up to the top right and select your country. And now I'm just gonna go over and add my Gerber file. Once that's done, I can customize my order however I want. You'll notice over here on the right, there's a $2 special offer. And then you can see the build time. And now that that's done, we can see the shipping time and the cost. So not only is JLCPCB.com super easy and fast to use, they make very high quality PCBs, and as you saw, they ship quickly and inexpensively to the United States. To get your custom PCB manufacturing started, just go to JLCPCB.com. So I have a motherboard for a disc version PS5. Let's compare it to the digital version. Now for the disc version of PS5, I found that this area right here has 12 volts when the motherboard is plugged in, but the power to the console is off. So this little fuse right here has 12 volts. This area does not have any voltage when the console is turned off, but it does have a fuse here. So I'm guessing at some point, some of the main power does go through this fuse. On the digital version, I've found that there's not even a fuse here, and there's none of these components up here. This is potentially great news. Theoretically, if I add all these components here from this motherboard, and I add this fuse from this motherboard, maybe we'll get power here. If we get power here, then the disk drive should at least be powered up. So I'm gonna add all these components next and hopefully that'll give us power to the disk drive. I have all the components added from this motherboard onto this digital motherboard, and I don't see anything else that I need to add. Now these look exactly the same, or this one looks exactly what this one used to look like. So I think it's time to test it again. And in all honesty, I don't know if there's any power here, but I do know whether there's power or not here, but you are gonna have to wait and see. I do wanna be clear, even if this does power up the disk drive, I still don't think it'll work but you never know. Let's get it back together and test it. And that's together enough to test. Let's plug it in and see what it does. Okay, and power cable going in. Okay, let's see if we have an eject button beep. Oh no, we still don't. Okay, let's see if the console has power. Okay, the console does. Let's see what happens when we put a disc in. Oh, it takes the disc in. Does it spin up? It's not spinning up, it's making noise. Since the eject function doesn't work, I'm going to manually eject the disc. Then I'm gonna put it back in and see if it recognizes here that there's a disc in it. It seems to me that most likely the Southbridge has disabled actually reading a disc. But let's try this and see if we get a disc icon up on the screen. Okay, now let's put the disc back in and see what happens. Will it take it? Okay, it's taking it in. And there's absolutely nothing on the screen indicating that it knows there's a disc in there. And the disk drive is making noise. It seems like it is trying to read it, but the disk won't actually spin up. So I think probably what's happening is, unfortunately, the software has disabled the actual spinning up of a disk. 
but I think it's amazing we actually got a disk drive to pull a disk in in the PS5 Digital. So hey, that's something. And it's been a fun experiment for me and I hope you've enjoyed watching it. I also tried this experiment on the Xbox One S All Digital Edition. I'll link that video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if it worked on that console. Thank you so much to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Thank you for stopping by today and watching it and I hope you have a good one.